Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy, and today we'll take a look at every single thing that's brand new on Android 15 Beta 2 that was launched today on May 15th. Now, if you are a part of the beta program, simply go inside of your feedback application on the top left-hand side, go inside of release notes, and this is every single thing that's brand new with this update. Now, if you're not a part of the beta program, I will place this link below the video inside the description. So if you'd like to read for it for yourself, you are able to. Now, this right here is just the beta 2 release information. So here's the release date, May 15th. Here's your build number. This is a little bit of a introductory paragraph. And then right here, you actually have two categories listing out every single thing that's brand new in terms of features as well as behavior changes. So all I'm going to do in this video is I will just read through this entire list. So this way you know exactly what is brand new. And then we'll actually dive deep and take a look at some of these features firsthand. Now, there is one more thing I want to show you, and that is this portion right here. So as you take a look on this page, you go right by the beta 2 information. You'll see this hyperlink. It's the beta 2 is now available in blue. You tap on it and it will actually list every single thing out in extended form. So everything is written out, giving you good, you know, specific details. And also, too, if you'd like to see some of these in action, even though I'll show you in this video, they do have small little videos. They have GIFs showing you exactly what they are talking about. So private space is one of the bigger brand new features that is a part of this update that I'll also show you here in just a second. So now going through the list of every single thing that's brand new in terms of the features, you have more efficient AV1 software decoding. You have modernizing Android's GPU access. And then here's the big one. This is private space, which we'll take a look at here in just a second. It's as if you almost have a secondary part of a phone. You have your main part and then the private space, very similar to Samsung's private or secure folder. So this way, maybe if you have a application of Facebook or a game, you can have it on the main part of the phone, but also have it in your private space where either this way, it's just a business line or it's a separate, maybe secondary account. So this way you can have two accounts if you play a game, but we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that one here in just a second. Query most recent user selection for selected photos access. You have richer widget previews with generated previews API, which means you'll have better or customizable previews of widgets. You also have a smoother picture in picture experience, which we'll also take a look at. You can set vibration effect for notification channels, which means if you get a notification from Facebook, it'll vibrate differently than Instagram, which could be differently than if it's a text message versus let's say Twitter. So you can actually set that up, but I don't believe it's out just yet. It was introduced here with Android 15 beta two. I wasn't able to find where you can actually change the different types of vibration or haptic feedback per application just yet. You also have improved large screen multitasking. So if you have the Pixel tablet or the Pixel Fold, your large screen, uh, the, or I should say the multitasking has been improved, especially pinning to applications. Permission checks on content URLs, improvements for Canvas, improved open type variable font API, CJK variable font, automatic line break configuration, New Japanese Hentaigana font. Uh, hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, and then for the behavior, uh, changes. You have support for 16 kilobit pages sizes. So that's just kind of a way that you're able to open up pages quicker, launch things quicker. It's a way to actually kind of save on battery and just make the phone go a little bit quicker between different applications. Required changes for some apps to support private space. So as we we're talking about from before, some of the developers would have to make sure that they support private space when it comes down to development. Increased minimum target SDK version from 23 to 24. Predictive back animations are enabled for apps that opted in. So that, pre that predictive back animation, so when you pull back, it'll kind of show you a little bit of where you are about to go. So this way it's actually just there built in. You wouldn't have to go inside of developer options. Changes to when apps can modify the global state of do not disturb mode. Secured background activity launches. Safer intense text view with changes for complex letter shapes and locale aware default line height for edit text. So let's first set up private space. So private space again is just a second part of the phone. It's almost as if you have a completely different user. So this way you would have completely different logins and credentials for the applications that you see here versus what would be in your private space. Now private space would show up on the very bottom of your application tray, 
but I don't have it set up just yet because I wanted to show you the process. So first you want to head inside of your settings. You're going to scroll down, take a look at your security and privacy. And then inside of security and privacy, this is where you see private space. So you tap on this one, you verify it's you with either a pin, password, uh, your fingerprint or face recognition. This gives you all of the details of what you're basically doing. So you choose your Google account for your space, you set a lock, and then you can install applications. And again, they are completely separate than what you see on the main part of your phone. Very, very similar to Samsung's secure folder. So apps in your private space won't appear in Permission Manager, Privacy Dashboard, and other settings when your private space is locked. Your private space can't be moved to another device. You'll need to set up another private space if you want to use it on another device. And that's pretty much the most important stuff. So how about we hit on set up? So as you can see, it's pretty much as if we were setting up a new phone, which you kind of are. It's a completely different user. So we're going to go through, choose a new lock. In order for me to do this, I do have to put in my normal pin for my phone. And then once you do that, you can choose if you want pattern fingerprint, if you want pin fingerprint or password fingerprint. So I'm going to do with the pin fingerprint. Now for this one, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four just to make this one pretty simple. I wouldn't suggest doing that. And then how about we set up our fingerprint? Again, it's literally, you know, uh, just like setting up a regular phone on the normal side of the device. So we're gonna go through, set this up. And as you guys know, I always set it up with one finger profile. I do it with both of my left thumb and my right thumb, just so then this way there are less scans for it to have to go through. For some people who state that you just want to go through and set up your right thumb twice or your left thumb twice or even three times, you're just making your phone have to authenticate going through more scans. So it's actually much quicker with one fingerprint profile going with both thumbs. So now that we have done that, we are now just setting up our private space. So now that you've activated private space, all you have to do is go inside of your application tray, scroll all the way down to the very bottom, and that's where it's located. Now, once you open up private space, you just put in your pin or password, fingerprint, whatever it may be. You can see how fast and easy it was to get in there. Even though it was one fingerprint profile, I did with both of my thumbs. But on the very bottom is your default applications. And these are brand new. So all of the settings, if you made any changes, you'll actually have to go through and make the changes again. So you have your camera, the internet, you have contacts, feedback. Here's your files, photos, Pixel Buds Manager, and the Play Store. Now let's say, for example, I go inside of files. There's absolutely nothing on this user or this side of my phone. So nothing from the main part will show up here and nothing that you take here in terms of photos or notes or any of these applications, none of those details will make it back to the main part of the phone. Now, when it comes down to other applications such as, you know, Trading View or Twitter, Whiteout, you know, YouTube Music, YouTube Studio, whatever it may be, you actually have to go and, and install it. So this is just opening up the Play Store again in order for you to put it into your private space. Now, anytime that you want to lock this up and you're done using it, you tap on lock and so forth. If you want to go right back inside of there, you just tap there, put in your fingerprint and now you're right back in and then you have all your applications sitting here. Now there are additional settings with this one. And as you scroll down, you can see your lock information. So this one's set up as pin. You can also lock private space automatically. So for the Samsung phone, how I have mine set up is the moment I leave secure folder, it's locked. So when you go here, you have a few different options. It's every time device locks, after five minutes of inactivity, or only after device restart. So it's whichever one you would like to use when it comes down to what makes sense to you in order to lock your private space. You can also hide a private space when it's locked, and then you can also delete private space itself. So once you add in all your applications, everything is just right here and you're pretty much almost starting over. You pretty much almost have a completely different user profile, or maybe you have a business profile set up on your, on your phone versus your personal that is sitting right up over here. And again, anytime you're finished, you just hit unlock and now it's locked. Now the next feature that I want to cover today is about deceptive applications or at least scanning for deceptive apps. There was a few people selected with Android 14 that was able to see it. Also a few people in Singapore that was able to see it. But what you want to do is again go inside of your security and privacy 
scroll all the way down to look at more security and privacy. And then this is where you can see this option here called scanning for deceptive apps. So if there's any fraudulent activity or phishing going on, it'll actually uh, runs all the scanning runs privately right in your device, checking app activity for phishing or other deceptive behavior. If it's detective, some app info is sent to Google Play Protect to confirm the threat and warn app users. So again, this one was, you know, being looked at in Singapore. It was also looked at by a few people or at least selected people on Android 14. I think it was beta three for that one, um, but uh, it is now actually officially out. Now this next feature is one that's finally not hidden in developer options anymore. It's just baked into Android 15. And that is, let's say you go inside of settings uh, or, or pretty much any other application. But one of the cool things is that if you are swiping back, it'll actually show you the predictive back. It's showing you where you are about to go. Now, I wish it would actually, you know, condense this screen a little bit more, make this screen smaller so we can actually see where we are about to go but it is showing you exactly a little bit of a a preview of where you're about to go as you are going back a screen again it's just baked into android 15 it's not you know located hidden inside of developer options anymore now for this next feature we're going to go inside of youtube to show you the picture in picture and how smooth it is going the action of watching a video swiping up to your home and then taking a look at you know how it goes into picture in picture so any application that is built for picture in picture is now much more smooth than what it was from before and i mean i'd have to state that this is a pretty big improvement there's no fluttering there's no jittering uh, there's nothing going on that makes it not smooth this is just a smooth process coming down into picture in picture now lastly i do want to go back over inside of the release notes i want to take a look at this little hyperlink so at least you know exactly where i'm finding this now there is another little video or gif towards the bottom to show you everything when it comes down to multitasking for larger screens but i do want to show you another you know portion of this page here and it's a way that it's able to help you out with battery life as well as the snappiness and quickness of the phone because android 15 adds support for devices that use larger page sizes with support for 16 kilobyte pages in addition to the standard four kilobyte now as you scroll on down when you take a look what exactly is this doing it's reduced power draw during app launch 4.56 percent reduction on average Faster camera launch, 4.48% faster on hot starts on average, and 6.6% faster cold starts on average. Improved system reboot time improved by 1.5%, approximately 0.8 seconds. Lower app launch times while system is under memory pressure, 3.16% lower on average with more significant improvements, up to 30% for some apps that they have tested. So again, you'll be able to notice that the phone could be much, much quicker when you're using Android 15 and also be much more efficient when it comes down to the battery. Here's private space for which we have already, you know, completely have gone through. Now here's the portion I wanted to show for the improved large screen multitasking. So you can actually watch this little video here. So it will actually help when it comes down to multitasking as well as pinning applications. So you can actually save a app pair when it comes down to your Pixel tablet or the Pixel Fold. So they were able to improve the multitasking on larger screens. Let's see really quick just to see if there is anything else. This is talking about how you know much more smooth picture in picture is, which we already took a look at. Here's the richer widget previews with generated previews. So this is pretty much what it would normally look like preview with developer placeholder content and then generated preview showing a user's favorite contact. So this is maybe kind of telling me what it could be made up with with a developer, but then also this is a user's favorite contact right here. So you'll be able to have much better, richer widgets when it comes down to Android 15. Here is the predictive back. And then in this video here, at least they're showing it with Google, it's showing you where you are about to go. So if you were using a couple different applications or looking at a couple different pages, you didn't wanna be surprised by what you're about to go back to, you can see exactly where you're going on the side of your device here. But you can see that this is getting much smaller you know, of a little bit, you know, look at this. It's getting much smaller than what I was getting, especially when it comes down to the settings, but the settings should have been the exact same thing as that application. Also to set vibration effects for notification channels. So I didn't see this just yet, but again, you can change the vibration effect for different channels, meaning different applications. So if you get a notification, 
and you feel the notification, you know exactly what that notification is from. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to share in today's video, trying to cover everything that's brand new on Android 15 beta 2, and also wanted to show you a few of those. So if you guys appreciated the video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.